Congressman, can you tell us about uh, why you're here today supporting this event? You know, we heard you're going to get right in on the action too. Yeah, well, there's a, a huge demand for uh, fresh food pro products right now, and food bank is seeing about a 50% increase in uh, the amount of demand that they're, they're receiving. So it's great to be here. It's great to be able to hand out some uh, USDA products uh, and get some fresh food and dairy and meat to uh, residents here in the southern tier. Why are events like this uh, important, especially, you know, in Binghamton there is, um, or there was anyways, a food desert and they're building a north side grocery yeah. store, but um, obviously there's a need in not only this community, but communities across the country. Well, I think what, what we've all seen right now with the pandemic is uh, people are out of work, uh, businesses are shut down, uh, people are just not having the same income that they had come in a few months ago. That puts a lot of demand on, on families' budgets, and that's why it's helpful to have organizations like the Food Bank who are here to help provide uh, fresh food, uh, fresh meat, dairy products uh, to people who are in need right now. So I know you helped secure a $150,000 grant for the North Side Market. Yeah. Tell me about how you can work uh, on kind of a federal level to address food insecurity. Well, I think it's it's by looking at funding streams and how we can find uh, uh, areas of uh, funding to help food deserts across the country. The north side is an area that for, for a long time has been without a grocery store. It's important to have uh, fresh fruit, fresh fruit, uh, fresh produce, dairy, meat available to residents so you can have a healthy diet. Uh, and we need to be doing more of that across the country. How many of these have you participated in so far? We've done about, I've done about a handful of uh, food drives so far. Uh, did one up in, in Chenango County not too long ago. Uh, but it's been uh, great to see the organizations like the Food Bank come together, uh, be able to provide good USDA products to residents here in the Southern Tier and uh, be able to also uh, help them uh, meet their budgets. What's it like for you personally to just see firsthand the need? It's, uh, it's, it's quite emotional, to be honest with you. Uh, 500 people signed up for this particular uh, event today. That shows that uh, people are still out of work. People are still struggling. Uh, this pandemic is not over yet, and we still need to make sure that we're meeting the needs of families and workers across the community. A big need right now is the need for fresh food, and that's why it's so great this, uh, the, the food bank is handing out these products today. In any sense that all these various initiatives to keep farmers busy through this whole Nourish New York USDA efforts, is it actually working? Are you getting feedback from farmers that it's, it's helping them? Well, it, it's, it's never going to make up for the losses that farmers are suffering right now because schools are shut down, because restaurants are just reopening now. Uh, this is helping them more, uh, but more has to be done at the federal level to get assistance to our farmers, uh, things like direct aid, uh, trying to get the, their product to food banks, and uh, more has to be done, but this is a good step. I don't know the question I have for this event, but if you don't mind, can we take a couple off topics? Sure. Can you just talk about um, and touch on maybe what I'd be interested in is um, what happened that night in Washington, D.C. when there were uh, protesters out front of the Capitol and then uh, the president walked to the nearby church and um, held the Bible up and, you know, a lot of got a lot of reaction. Yeah. Um, what was your reaction to that and just really what's been going on across the country, but especially in D.C.? Right. Well, I think we have to all draw a very bright line between peaceful protests and people who are looting and vandalizing property. Uh, in my opinion, peaceful protests are a good thing. Uh, we should never uh, be using tear gas and things like that on peaceful protesters uh, for photo opportunities. So I would encourage every leader from the president on down to respect people's right to peacefully protest. Uh, and, and that's something that we have always had in our country here. And obviously in New York State, I know you work from a federal standpoint, but New York State is going through a lot of reform with um, police specifically use of force laws and yep. a lot of local departments are reviewing um, their use of force policies and even releasing them. So what do you make of that and uh, just the change that's really happening so quickly? Well, I think it's good that we're having a conversation around police reforms. Uh, I think many of these conversations are long overdue. There should be national standards, and we're looking at that at the federal level right now. Law enforcement is a very dangerous business. Our, our police officers, by and large, do uh, a good job uh, protecting and serving our communities. Certainly, there are, are, are areas where we need to make reforms to improve relations with communities of color, and that's something we're looking at doing at the federal level, uh, trying to improve those relationships. How important would you say are things like body cameras? We just saw we did a story in Syracuse where 
I think the department only has a limited amount of body cameras, but they just got funding for, you know, to have their whole set of officers have them. But, yeah. um, you know, how important do you think things like things like that are? I think body cameras are a, a huge uh, deal, and I, I'd like to see every officer have a body camera for their safety and for the safety of the public. Uh, part of the bill that we're working on at the federal level would help provide more funding to local departments uh, to provide body cameras. It's good for police safety, it's good for the safety of the community, and if there is an incident, it can be on film uh, to be reviewed later on. And then obviously today we're entering phase three. Um, you know, here in the southern tier anyways, things seem to be going slowly back to normal. I mean, I think there was one day, 36 hours, we didn't see one case. Yeah. How are, what's the vibe? here, but also at a national level of COVID. Well, I, I think locally people have been uh, very good about following social distancing policies. Businesses are being safe in their reopening process. Uh, I, I do want to remind people that we're not through this pandemic yet, as you're seeing across the country, especially states that opened too early. You're seeing spikes in cases of uh, coronavirus. We don't want to have that happen here in New York State, so I think as long as we continue to be safe about reopening and people continue to follow the social distancing guidelines and wearing face masks, uh, there's no reason why we shouldn't be able to continue to reopen. But I, I, I'd urge caution because we're not through the woods yet.